Man, I just want to give it up to Nina and the team for making that awesome video. I also want to say thank you to Justin Flanagan for holding it down while I've been uh, out sick. And I want to say thank you to everybody who has sent a message, to those who even sent some food our way, those who gave us either a message on Facebook, those who've been praying for me and my family. Um, all of that has meant so much as we've recovered and are recovering from the coronavirus. And I'm glad to be back in the pulpit this morning. A happy Sunday. We're about to get down in this series called Twas a Nightmare Before Christmas. And because I had uh, a message planned for you uh, before I got sick, I still got to preach that message. That word is still fresh off the press of God. And so I'm going to preach that message and I'm going to start it with a poem that I wrote about this series. So here's the poem. "'Twas the nightmare before Christmas, we were all in our house. No one was going, not even our spouse. Restaurants were closed, and so was the church, as doctors and conspiracy theorists begin to research. Democrats and Republicans were all on one side, as the election loomed over a sensitive time." We had riots and injustice, looting and death, yet there was still a glimmer of good news up ahead. Christmas time was here, and 2020 was coming to an end, which reminds us that there can be peace on earth, goodwill toward men. I know that this year has seemed like a nightmare. I'm telling you, these last two weeks for me and my family have been like a nightmare. But the good news about this time of year is that we celebrate that hope has come into the world and his name is Jesus Christ. Peace has come into the world and his name is Jesus. And I'm telling you, whether we see that peace here on this side of heaven or we're waiting for his second coming where he's fully gonna bring and, uh, and change all the wrong things and turn them into right, I'm telling you, we have some good news to talk about in the middle of the nightmares that we face. And so I just wanna preach the next message in this series as we're talking about the nightmare before Christmas the next message is called The Nightmare State of the Nation. The Nightmare State of the Nation. Now, our nation this year has gone through the ringer, whether it's been all the stuff related to the virus, whether it has been the civil unrest, whether that's been a loss of jobs or the economy. I'm telling you, the state of the United States uh, has been rocky. And I was thinking about this in relation to the time of Christ, because the state of Israel during Christ's birth was very similar to what we've been going through this year. Matter of fact, the um, state of Israel 
um, during the time of Christ's birth was coming out of this 450-year period where they did not have a prophet giving the word of God. And so there was almost like this dry spiritual spell that they were in. You have also during this time that uh, the nation of Israel was under this oppressive rule of Rome. And so it was like they were prisoners in their own country. You see that they were divided in their politics even. I know that some of this stuff is sounding familiar to our day. You had the Pharisees versus the Sadducees versus the Essenes versus the Zealots. This is just the state of Israel during the time of Christ's birth. There was even moral decay because of the influence of Rome over Israel. Because Roman government was there and they were uh, under their rule, you had a lot of their idolatry, a lot of their worldliness. And this was all around this same time. But right before Jesus was born, God sends a prophet to be born. See, we all talk about the birth of Jesus, and of course, that's the reason for the season. But there's also in the Christmas story this birth also of a prophet named John the Baptist. And we can read about this in Luke chapter 1. And I want to say this because I think this is so important. Uh, this nation is in this nightmare state, but God always has somebody Come on, somebody. God always has somebody and something in his plan. I know that you might have been going through it this year. You've been going through it this last week. But I want you to know God still has a plan. And his plan was to send John the Baptist to the earth right even before Jesus. And this is why the Bible says that God had this plan. Luke 1, 17. This is an angel talking to Zechariah, John's dad. It says, he, John the Baptist, will also go before him, Jesus, in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. This was the reason why John the Baptist was coming, even before Jesus, was to help turn this nightmare state of Israel, to help turn them back to the things that were most important. Now, I believe that the reason why 2020 has been what it's been like for America and for us is because I believe that 2020 has been like a John the Baptist uh, moment for us. I believe it's been like uh, John the Baptist, if you will, a prophetic season for you and I to look at our life, for us as a nation to pause and reflect and see what is really most important for us, just as God used John the Baptist in his day to help turn a nation to Jesus, I believe that God is using 2020 and our day to turn us to the same thing. And so I want to share with you three things 2020 has revealed about our nation, and you and I are who make up this nation. And so I want us to examine our own hearts in this as we share this message today. So the very first thing that I want to share with you that 2020 has revealed is one thing it has revealed is the distance between parents and children. Now, I know that I got some moms that are about to shoot me down right now, and you're saying, Pastor, I know you are not talking about me in 2020 because I don't feel like I've had any distance from my kids. Uh, I know a lot of moms might be feeling that way with all of the homeschooling that you've had to do this year, even this season that we're in right now. My, my wife is actually having to take care of, of our daughter's schoolwork. And so I know some of you guys are like, wait, wait, I don't know about that. Well, let's go back to what John the Baptist was said to do. And one of his main things that he was supposed to do to help turn the, this nation around, this nightmare state that Israel was in. Verse 17, it says, he will go before him, Jesus, in the spirit and power of Elijah. Talking about John the Baptist going before Jesus in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children. Listen, if, if you think about it, I believe one of the things that 2020 has exposed is that we inordinately care about things outside of our house more than the ones inside of our house. Y'all, I believe it's almost like we needed social distancing just to show us this year that the people in our house are more important than anybody else outside 
of our house. I believe it's been like John the Baptist as he came in his day to tell the nation of Israel the thing that was most important. I believe that that same thing is true today in our age and in, in our moment in 2020 that, that the Lord is telling us, guys, if we want to see the nation turn around, that starts right here in your homes. See, before God made the church, before God made a nation of Israel, before God made or, or before the United States existed, God made the family. And I want you to know that the breakdown of a nation starts with the breakdown of the family. If we want to see our nation continue to go down a nightmare state, I want you to know that that starts in the family just as it does if we want to see us come out of that state. If we're going to come out of the state, we need fathers to be uh, turn their attention back to their kids. We need fathers to turn their attention back to their spouse. We need mothers to turn their attention back to their kids. We need them to turn their attention back to their spouse. We need uh, the, all of the family members uh, to turn their attention back to God. We need to see homes restored families restored, relationships in the house restored, if we're going to actually see our nation rise again. But here in our 21st century America, it seems like we care more about keeping up with the Kardashians than we do keeping up with our child. Uh, I think that we care more in, in our nation, and I think this is what 2020 has exposed, that we care more about who's going to be living in the White House than who actually lives in our house. Uh, our hearts seem to be caring more about things like playing Call of Duty instead of taking up our duty and taking care of those people in our house. It seems like we are so distracted by all the people on our social media pages that we have literally um, forgotten the people that we actually see every day in person. And, and if our nation's going to change... It has to change first with our hearts going back to the people we have the most influence over. See, we want to follow all these influencers, and we want to follow the Instagram influencers, and we want to follow all the people in Hollywood, and we want to think about all these other things outside the house that we can do to feel special and, and be somebody. But if, if you want to be somebody... <laughs> If you want to go somewhere, it starts first in your home with your kids, with your spouse, because that is the first most nuclear place of change in any society. I'm preaching a little bit today because I need somebody to wake up. This is like a John the Baptist moment. Wake up fathers to your kids. Wake up mothers to your kids. Wake up fathers to your spouse, husbands to your, to your wife, and wives to your husband. It's time for you to love your wife as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. It's time for you, woman of God, uh, that, that wife of God, if you will, I want you to wake up to honor your husband and love him and submit to him as you would Christ and his place. As the, as the head of the church. I want you to think about kids, if you're watching, how to honor your father and mother. It's time for us to get back to what a family of God is supposed to look like because that is what begins to change a nation first and foremost. And this is why God had John the Baptist come on the scene to first change the father's heart, change the father's heart to see what is most important. And before I'm preaching this to you, I know i got to preach it to myself. I thought of this verse in 1 Timothy, uh, 1 Timothy chapter 3, um, verses 4 and 5. This is what the scripture says. He must manage. This is talking about a leader in the church, by the way, a bishop, an overseer of the church. He must manage his own family well and see that his children obey him. And he must do so in a manner worthy of full respect. If anyone does not know how to manage his own family, how can he take care of God's church? See, before I preach this to you, I need to look inward to me and see how I'm managing what is most important in my life. If I want to see the most change, it's not going to be just me preaching to you. See, we like to do this, man. We want to preach to everybody else before we actually preach to ourselves and before we live out this message in our own home. If you want the most, the most influence and you want to make the, the biggest difference, 
start living out a beautiful, loving relationship with your kids in the sight of God and bringing him into that house. And as for you and your house, you serve the Lord and you watch how that begins to change and transform a nation. Because this is the most nuclear part of a nation, a family, a family unit, the thing that God started before he started anything else. And so I'm calling out to fathers and mothers and kids right here to see what is most important. I think 2020 has revealed that, like John the Baptist in his day and his nation. Here's the second thing that I want to say has been revealed in 2020. The distance, not only between fathers and children, but look at this, the distance between wrong and right. In verse 17, you see uh, what we read about John the Baptist. The second thing, the second mandate on his ministry, if you will, that John the Baptist would have is in verse 17. It says, and he would bring this distance, uh, bring uh, these people who are disobedient to the wisdom of the just. So you would see this, there's this distance even in his day between people that were doing wrong and right. I want you to know that 2020 has revealed there is a distance today between people that do wrong and right, people that know the difference between wrong and right. I can say it this way. I believe that there is a moral decay or a moral decline in our nation. And I believe that 2020 has revealed that. And it started during the pandemic when everybody was watching Tiger King. Uh, listen, man, I saw everybody on my Facebook page. I saw everybody on Twitter talking about Tiger King. And I was like, man, what is going on? And so I was curious. I needed to check it out. Wanted to see what everybody, what all the fuss was all about. And I get sucked into watching like a train wreck right in front of me. You see this guy who owns this big tiger zoo in Oklahoma, and he is doing some whacked out crazy stuff. Like, I'm telling you, this just shows the depravity of man, the sinful nature of man, how far man has fallen from the garden where God made him in his image. And you just see this depravity lived out, all type of wickedness, all type of just sin, all type of just bad things that are happening between people. And you're like, oh my goodness. I actually had to confess to the, the staff. We had a little confessional time. Like what's the, like the worst thing that you did during quarantine? This was about in May, right when we were about to come out. And I said, guys, you have to forgive me. I watched all of Tiger King. <laughs> and I said, you just have to forgive me because, man, I felt like I had to take a shower after I watched it. I don't know if you've ever watched something. You felt like, man, I need a shower. I need to get clean. I need, I need to go to church after this, man. Like, that's the way I felt after that. But I believe that that Tiger King and really a lot of stuff that's like this is just a picture of the depravity that's in our hearts and this distance between right and wrong that is in our land, this moral decay that we have seen in our land. Matter of fact, you can see it in statistics. I was looking up some statistics for this message, and you can see that the murder rate is up 28% this year in 2020 over last year. Domestic violence calls are up, and they're on the rise. I was trying to find the exact number, but I couldn't find it, but everybody has said that there has been more calls related to domestic violence uh, this year than ever before. Grand Theft Auto is up 6%. And matter of fact, I was watching the news just the other day, and I saw on the news that um, they're trying to figure out why Grand Theft Auto, why people are stealing cars at an alarming rate. Hate crimes are up this year specifically towards Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders. Um, and that is all due to the coronavirus and how that relates to people of Asian descent. Uh, financial scams are spreading like crazy. You could see illegal drug use with opi opioid overdoses, how they're on the rise. You can see even porn consumption. Pornography consumption is up 18% since the pandemic has started. Y'all, I'm telling you, in America, we're talking about the nightmare state of this nation. The nightmare state of this nation is it, a part of it is that we are on this moral decline. There is a distance between people knowing right and wrong and, and people following that in their lives. Uh, I've not just seen this in statistics. 
I've seen this out and about and even in stories. Uh, the week of Thanksgiving, I'm in my office preparing for my message, and I am uh, there, and I see some something out my window. I go and look out the window of in our church parking lot, and we had three SWAT cars and probably 30 police cars that were actually here prepping for a raid that was going to be across the street here um, to somebody's house who was selling drugs in our neighborhood. Uh, you could see it, and as I'm out and about just running, I can see people are just a lot more irritated, like by my presence, me just being on the road. People have flipped me off like for no reason whatsoever. I heard from my sister that my niece, who works at McDonald's, as you know, somebody who's just taking in money from people, she was telling me um, a couple weeks ago that Olivia was there uh, taking money from customers, and some naked man, buck naked, drives up, and he's pleasuring himself in the drive through of McDonald's. Let me tell you something. There is a distance between right and wrong right now in our nation. And a part of it is, is that we're not preaching justice anymore. We're not preaching righteousness anymore. We're not seeing that first in the home, but we're not seeing it not even in the church you, you can't even come to some churches and find a, a preaching of, of righteousness. And here's the problem with that and, and why we need this to return in our nation. Because Proverbs 13.34 says this, righteousness, 14.34, righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. Another version of that says sin condemns any people. If we want to see the nation turn and, and go in the opposite direction and we can start seeing a real American dream instead of a nightmare, listen, what we're going to have to see is that righteousness is exalted. People knowing what is right and what is wrong, people knowing what is right and following what is right, that is what we're going to have to see if we're going to see this nation change again. Listen, unless people govern themselves, unless people know a moral code that is higher than their, their conscience tells them, then they will not follow that and will not govern themselves. And so the breakdown of a nation continues with the breakdown of morality. And so you say, well, preacher, how do we find that? Like some of us have maybe grown up in an environment where we didn't have the word of God and we didn't have a home where there was a mother and a father telling us what to do and correcting us for what we did wrong or those type of things. And you say, I've just been out here doing whatever I need to do, what we need to do if that's us. Because trust me, I had all sorts of dysfunction in my home. But when I found Jesus, I found his word, I found his truth. And I begin to renew my mind to his word, renew my mind to what he says is right, and renew my mind to what, what uh, he says even is wrong. And I started to live my life after the pattern of what he says and not just what I feel. Man, listen, that's when my life began to change, is when I renewed my mind to the word. So here's how we find the wisdom of the just that John the Baptist was coming and talking about, is we search memorize and obey the scriptures. Listen, we search, we memorize, and we obey the scriptures. 2 Timothy 3, 16, it talks about all scripture is given by the inspiration of God, and it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and look at this, for instruction and in righteousness. Guys, a lot of us in this nation are, are the ones that John the Baptist actually came for in his nation. People that had this distance between what, they, what was right and what is wrong, and they didn't know. And so I'm telling you right now, if that's you, we got to search the scriptures. If you're brand new following Jesus, get into the New Testament and read a chapter a day. If you're somebody who wants to know a little bit more about the Word of God, read the Bible through in a year, because I'm telling you, we need to bridge the distance that we see in our land this, this decay, we need to bridge that distance between right and wrong. And here's the third thing that I believe that 2020 has revealed to us. It's revealed to us just like John the Baptist in his day and his nation that parents, they need to return their hearts to their kids. It's revealed that there's been this distance between right and, and wrong. And we need to see that, that, that gap come 
and, and, and actually we need to bridge that gap. But then the third thing is that there is a distance also between people and God. There's this distance between people and God. Verse 17, uh, the last part of John the Baptist's ministry is to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Now listen, the reason why John the Baptist came before Jesus, the reason why Jesus didn't just come on the scene and say, okay, I'm the savior of the world, is because people wouldn't have been ready for him because they were serving other gods and they were serving other things and they were living for other things and they were serving and, and loving other things other than God. They were living in their sin and so they didn't want and they wouldn't have wanted the savior. But John the Baptist comes like this prophet and he's preaching repentance, which means to turn. And he's telling people, listen, you need to get your life right and you need to literally cut down these things and, and take down these idols. And you need to do all these things so that you'll be ready for Jesus, the Savior, the Messiah when he comes. And that reminded me, man, of this year, because a lot of things have been stripped away this year. In 2020, a lot of things, maybe it's because of the pandemic, maybe it's your work, maybe it's money, maybe it's sports, maybe it's all these other things that we have been living for, all these other things that we've been going after. Maybe it's even some other sin in your life, but 2020 has gotten us and I believe has, has provoked us to be at a place where we're recognizing, you know what, the only thing that really, truly matters is Jesus and the things he says. I, I was reminded of a scripture in Psalm 24 um, where the Bible's talking about who's gonna actually, who can actually have this relationship with the Lord? Who, who can actually get to the Lord? Uh, who can actually find him and follow him and be in relationship with him? And Psalm 24, three through four says this, who may ascend to the mountain of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? The one who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not trust in an idol or swear by a false God. And I thought of that, man, that is exactly why John the Baptist came first. It's why 2020 has come even before the second coming of the Lord. It's because this is a moment for you to examine your heart. This is a moment for you to say, okay, who is my master? Who is my Lord? Uh, what, what am I really living for? What am I serving? What am I saying yes to? What am I obeying more than anything else? If that's not Jesus, then you aren't ready really for what he's wanting to do in your life. And this is why John the Baptist came. He says, listen, if sin is that thing, you need to cut that thing down. You need to cut it at its root. You need to get it out of your life. You need to wash your hands from it. If another God is your master, you need to tear that idol down. I don't know if you're watching me right now and something is in your heart that you know that this thing is keeping you from Jesus. I'm going to be like John the Baptist and I hope that this year has been like that for you to for you to consider what is most important. I can't tell you enough and I can't tell you more emphatically that Jesus Christ is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and there is nothing more important in your life than having a relationship with him. He said this even just like John the Baptist. Jesus came preaching this in Matthew 6, 24. He says, we can't serve two masters for either he will hate the one and love the other or he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. But you can't serve God and mammon. That's money he's talking about in this portion of scripture. I don't know what, what idol is in your heart. I don't know, maybe if you're just on the fence in the things of God. And one day you're here and one day you're there. Listen, Jesus has to be Lord of your life. Maybe you've prayed a prayer even. And you've prayed and you've said, Lord, come into my life, be my Lord and Savior. But you haven't truly, fully prepared your heart for the King of glory to come in. You haven't truly like cleansed yourself to the point where you're saying, you know what? I don't want any of this other thing more than Jesus. It doesn't mean you have to be perfect. Jesus died on the cross for every single one of your sins, but you at least have to open up your heart to say, I need him, and I want to worship him, and I want to serve him more than any of these other things. That's why John the Baptist came. And if our nation's going to turn around, one of the things that we need to understand is we got to choose the right Lord. 
Another breakdown of a nation continues when people choose the wrong Lord. All of us are going to have some master. All of us are going to have some Lord. The Bible says whoever you obey, that's whose servant, that's whose slave you are. So that's either going to be Jesus to righteousness and holiness and the life that he has for you, or it's going to be sin unto death. And this is why Psalm 33, 12, part one says, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord Jesus Christ. Who is the Lord? I don't know where you're at in your relationship with God. I don't know where you're at in this relationship to this message. I don't know what 2020 has been hitting you with. But I do know that first and foremost, the Lord wants to minister to you in such a way where you come back and maybe that's you. As we're going into this prayer time, I want you to think about this. Maybe it's you where the Lord's just speaking that you need to return your heart to the thing that's most important, the things and the people in your house. Maybe you're here and you just need to repent of you know, putting other people and other things before your family. Now is your moment just to repent of that. Maybe you need to actually put some dates in the calendar for you and your spouse or you and your kids just for you to have personal time and connection. And maybe you need to, to get to a place where, you know what, we're going to read the Bible or pray or they're at least going to see me do that. We're going to come to church together. Those type of things saying, you know what, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Maybe for you, it's the second uh, part of the message where you're like, you know what? I need to know a little bit more about right and wrong, and I need to understand that, and I need to change my ways a little bit, and I need to start repenting. If that's you, maybe the Lord's calling you to get into the Word this year in 2021, start the Bible, uh, you know, read through the year, at least read through the New Testament, starting to understand, okay, how is God calling you to renew your mind? And maybe you're watching, and you don't know Christ as your Lord. Maybe you've prayed a prayer before, but you've never fully surrendered your heart to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Or maybe you need to do it again because you've been serving another idol. You've been getting your hands in some other sin that you don't need to be in. I want you right now to repent in your heart. Let 2020 just reveal to you, just like John the Baptist, the things that are most important in preparing our heart for the Lordship of Jesus in our life. So Father, we just thank you for this word this message, that it's a moment of reckoning for all of us, that we got to repent and turn and say, Jesus, you are most important in your, and in what you call us to, the right living in our family life and that type of thing. It is the most important thing for this nation because Father, you're calling this nation to change and this nation starts with me and, and my family changing and, and me and my influence is changing. And so Father, would you just help us? right here today, right here and right now, just to to submit to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. We thank you that Jesus Christ came and he's coming again. Before he comes, you said just in your word, you'd be bringing a John the Baptist like an Elijah to come and get our hearts right. And so make them right today as we put our faith in you. We love you, Lord, and we thank you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Thanks for joining us for worship today. I'm John Collier, and I hope today has inspired you to love God and to love others more. We always wanna take some time at the end to pray for you, especially if this is the first time of believing that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. Let's pray. Father, forgive us of our sins. Thank you for sending your son to die on the cross and raise again so that he can be king and we don't have to be. Help us to learn more about you so we can live more like you. (laughs) We want you to connect with us and we want to connect with you. You can comment down below or go to diversitychurch.net and we'll see you again next week.